Is it crazy to consider putting a canister filter on an aquarium as small as a 29 gallon? Ridiculous? Insane? Preposterous. Well, no, I don't think so. And in this video, I'm gonna do just that and go over the pros and cons of putting canister filters on smaller tanks. Cat hair everywhere. There's cat hair all over the place. This is a nightmare. For this video, I'm gonna be installing this CJ Whale 120 onto my 29 gallon Congo Tetra and Angel tank and replace the Heiger dual sponge filter that I have on there now. I know the tank looks bad. You don't have to tell me that. Lisa's gonna be rescaping that tank very soon and it'll look really good, but before she does, I wanna get the filtration straightened out. People are gonna say or comment this right away, so let me get this out of the way. No, this is not a review of the CJ Whale canister filter. We're gonna talk today about the pros and cons of putting canister filters on smaller aquariums or really any aquariums for that matter, and it's not gonna be specific to this filter. Everything that we talk about is gonna to apply to any canister filter that you get. All these idiots that are in the comments section that are gonna say, I wouldn't take anything he says seriously. He's just doing a biased advertisement. He's just in it for the money. Here's what I'll say about that. CJ sent me this filter two years ago and never asked me to do anything with it. And on top of that, we don't even sell this filter. Yeah, but what I really wanna say is, listen, there's a simple reason why you don't have any friends. It's because you're that guy that no one likes to hang around. You're the one that'll take a good thing and sit there and figure out all of the negative things about it. Being the guy that's always mad about something is not gonna make you any friends. Stop being that guy, go look for a job, and most of all, stop being an asshole. All right, get back on track, John. All right, this filter, like pretty much all canister filters, is gonna come with everything you need to filter your tank, while also leaving room for adding more things you might like, like purigen, polishing pads, or additional biomedia. But you can install it with just what comes in the box like I did, and you should be fine. The guy I was talking about earlier, you know, the one that doesn't have any friends, he's sitting alone in his mom's basement because he's always angry, super lazy, and hasn't learned to do simple things like changing a light bulb, resetting a trip breaker, or even checking the oil in his car. So he'd probably have a hard time installing this type of filter, but for people like us, people who have a vested interest in bettering ourselves, we're not gonna have any problems at all. Pretty much every canister filter installs the same way. You have an input with a hose and an output with a hose. You hook them up with their particular fittings, make sure everything's tight, and you're ready to go. Once you have everything hooked up, you'll wanna fill the canister with water and then prime it. Priming a canister filter just means getting the input hose full of water along with the canister itself so the pump isn't sucking a bunch of air. That's cute. Once it's full, plug it in and you're done. It's super simple. Well, maybe not for that guy. You know the guy. So what are the pros and cons to installing a filter like this on one of your smaller tanks? Well, let's start with the cons. The first con is cost. These things are pretty expensive. I mean, especially when you compare them to things like hang on the back filters and sponge filters. I mean, they're up there. This CJ Whale 120 is, well, well, 120 bucks. I just realized that. It's a 120 and it costs 120 bucks. But it's not that CJs are the expensive ones. The Fluval equivalent is about the same and don't even get me started on the Eheims. But brands like Marineland and Aquatop have more affordable canisters and even CJ has the Space Echo. That's still not the cheapest, but significantly cheaper than the Whale. I've done reviews on a bunch of canister filters. I'll put a link to that playlist right here. The second con is maintenance. Now it's not gonna be an issue for most people, well, it's gonna be a problem for the guy we talked about earlier. Poor thing. When you maintain a canister filter, the easiest way is to remove it from wherever you have it installed and take it to a slop sink, your kitchen sink, or even a bathtub. Clean it out, put everything back together again, and reinstall it. The reason I say it could be a problem is because when canister filters are full of water, they can be super heavy. Uh, well, not this one, because this one's tiny, but when you're talking about the canisters that you'll have on big monster tanks, 
those can weigh like 60 or 70 pounds when they're full of water. Again, most people aren't going to have an issue with that, but it had to be said. Can you hear baby kitty crying in the background? I have the door shut so she's not in here all up in my face. And the poor thing just won't stop crying. One thing I did want to mention, this is, I guess, should be in the pros, but uh, almost all canister filters have this quick disconnect feature, which disconnects the hoses from the canister itself. Makes things way easier and no mess. I say that because it makes it easier when you have to remove it from underneath your tank or wherever you have it installed. Let me know in the comments below when you're down there subscribing if you have any other cons about canister filters that I might have missed. But I'm done talking about the cons. I want to talk about the pros. The first pro is these things filter a lot of water and they do it through a ton of media. This is the main reason, not my favorite reason, but the main reason they're so efficient. They have to filter all of the water through all of this media and there's actually room that you can add even more if you wanted to. It's way more than what you'd find in really any hang on the back filter. Next is maintenance. Yes, maintenance is one of the pros. Wait, you said maintenance was a con. No, I said the fact that they can be pretty heavy to carry while doing maintenance is a con, but the maintenance itself is super simple. With everything being so easy to access, it makes it really easy to maintain, but that's not the best reason. The best is the fact that you'll be maintaining this thing much less often. I have canister filters in my fleet like this one here that I haven't touched in six months. When I do maintenance, or in this case, when Lisa does maintenance on this tank, she just does water changes, cleans up the debris, and cleans off the algae. But when it comes to the filter, we clean it out once every three months or so, sometimes six. Less work is always a very welcomed thing for most people, especially that guy. But if the facts that these are easy to maintain, do a great job of filtering a ton of water and have endless options for adding media isn't enough, let me tell you the best thing about these canisters and really every canister out there. In fact, let me show you something to prove my point here. You hear the audio in this video? It sounds pretty good, right? It's manageable, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Well, what you don't know is I use software to remove background noise. It doesn't remove all of it, but it removes most of it. Let me show you what it sounds like when I turn that off. Not good. I hate loud aquariums, I always have. This room is so loud and it drives me crazy, especially when I want to make a video. Canister filters are all dead nuts quiet. I, I don't even care what brand you get. I mean, you, you got to literally put your ear up to them to hear anything. And all you hear is like a gentle hum of the pump. But if you're a foot away from it, you hear absolutely nothing. Now I like my big sump systems like I have in this tank here, but if I'm being honest with you, if I had my way, I would have canister filters on every tank in this fish house. So they're super quiet, have a ton of space to add media, they're easy to maintain and do a great job filtering the water. Those are the pros. The cons are, they're kind of heavy and they're expensive. Now, I don't know about you, but I absolutely love canister filters and no, I don't think it's overkill to put one on a small tank. I mean, if you put one on like a 10 gallon, that might be a little bit silly, but anything 29 gallons and up, knock yourself out. I hope this video has helped you to understand canister filters a little better. And if it has, do me the favor of going down there and subscribing. And while you're down there, maybe click the like button too. It really does help us out a whole lot. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.